Hey there, Grumpy Old Fart here. Be sure to check me out over on Rumble. There you'll find all of my stuff from YouTube, plus my political and social commentary and weekly current events, which YouTube frowns on. Links to my Rumble channel, as well as my other YouTube channels, and links to let you order my books are in the description of this video. If you enjoy my content, please like, subscribe, share, and comment. I welcome your comments, even if you disagree with me. Now, on with the video. Hey there, Grumpy Old Fart here. I'm doing a Star Trek, the role-playing game story. I'm calling this one Marooned. I was playing in my friend Larry's Star Trek game. This has been more than 30 years ago. I was the science officer. My friend Bobby was the security chief. My friend Earl was the chief engineer. And Mark was the commanding officer. Tim was the executive officer. We had a good group. We had a good gaming group. We'd been attacked by a Klingon D-7 in our heavy cruiser. And though we'd won, our ship had been heavily damaged. Most of the crew reached the escape pods, but we made it to a transporter room, and we beamed down to a nearby planet. It was an unexplored planet. Unbeknownst to us, a second Klingon ship had arrived and had captured or killed the rest of our crew and destroyed what was left of our ship. We, we were stuck there. We had no idea, but we were stuck there. On the planet, <clears throat> excuse me, on the planet we found a cave for shelter, and that was cool. I started using my tricorder, being the science officer, I started using the tricorder, uh, trying to determine which plants were edible and trying to find potable water. Turns out, the entire planet was permeated with a bacteria. It was in the water, and the green leaf, and the roots, and all of the animal life. The bacteria was deadly, so all of that was poison to us. We, and, you know, we couldn't we couldn't eat any of it. Bobby and Earl tried to modify one of our communicators to broadcast a decent range distress call. We didn't have anything but our standard communicators, <clears throat> so we were you know we were stuck with that. Um, Mark and Tim were trying to figure out what to do. So they set off to try and explore a bit to find anything to help us survive. I tried to determine a way to purify water for us to drink. But that bacteria was resistant to just about everything. Uh, I boiled the water. I, I hit it. I, I actually used my phaser to heat the water to, you know, to steam and then reconstitute it like a still. <laughs> it wasn't working. Um... I, I did everything I could think of. I hit it with all kind the all kinds of uh, chemicals that I could find, but nothing was killing that bacteria. It was resistant to just about everything I could find. Uh, there were packs of carnivorous creatures. They looked like big rats that we were having to fend off. Luckily, we had found the cave, and you know that made decent shelter, so we could we could make a stand there. But it was just it was crazy. We were there for about three days. We, were, we had no water. We had no food. We were on the verge. We were really on the verge, you know. Uh, Mark and Tim came across a crash shuttle, and there were three dead Klingons. They were able to salvage a replicator and a generator along with a short-range communications transceiver. It took them two days to carry them back to the cave. By that time, you know, because they were gone for, for three days total. Uh... So by the time they got back, we were we were hurting and hurting status. We were in the cave for three days. They left to go get stuff, came back. It was three days. We were in hurting status. Using the replicator, um, we found we had food and we could create basic components. Uh, we had water. It could create water for us. But it was a Klingon replicator, so all we had was Klingon food. Yeah, gach. Lots of gach. <laughs> Now, I gotta say this: Klingon food was better than no food at all. It was edible, you know. Now, I, I firmly believe that um, I firmly believe that Larry realized he'd put us in a predicament where we couldn't survive. So that shuttle crash was was found they, when they found that shuttle crash. He was him throwing us a lifeline. I, I firmly believe that, but. It was crazy. It was absolutely crazy. Uh, we, our, our characters were able to last until we were rescued by an independent freighter, so we did get out of that situation. But 
this just goes to show you, man, if you're going to beam down to a planet, grab some life support stuff too. You know, food, water, that kind of thing. Do that first. Because if, if you don't have that stuff with you and something happens to your ship, even on a regular landing party just to explore, yeah, make sure you got food and water. Because if you don't, you're screwed. You are screwed. In the next, we, we were playing in the original series, uh, Kirk and Spock, that era. In the next generation, they have portable replicators you can take with you. Okay, and you know they, you wear them like a, like a I don't know it's like a like a. It looks kind of like a uh, an oversized laptop bag, <clears throat> but you, it allows you to create food and water and things like that, and that's cool. It's great for camping and for survival. But as far as as far as we had here, we didn't have none of that. We had none of that. Yeah, we we were gonna be screwed if Larry hadn't thrown us that lifeline. We'd have been screwed. <laughs> God bless you, Larry. I love you. Hope this finds everybody well. You folks have a good one. God bless one and all. Devo Poland, a scientific representative of a pacifist race called the Gandiri, is sent away as an exchange officer. His objective, to learn the one skill his species never developed, to fight. And he's sent to learn that skill from the one species who does it better than any other in the galaxy, humans. If you like science fiction with an upbeat military tone, check out my novel, Vanguard One.